Hi, it's George from Give Energy here. I'm in a kitchen and you're in a fridge for some reason. You've clicked on one of our portal guide videos. Thank you very much for doing so. We hope you enjoy it. Now, because the portal, much like our universe, is all encompassing and ever expanding, the powers that be have decided that we need to break down these videos into more digestible, bite-sized chunks for you to be viewing at your leisure. That's what we're doing now. That's what this is. If you want to watch the rest of them, we'll link them below. But for now, I'll leave you in the capable hands of me from the past. Enjoy! Hello, welcome back. We are in episode two of our beautiful, wonderful portal guide video series. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm George, as always. I hope you are having a wonderful day. We're here today. We're going to be talking through one of the kind of biggest tabs that you'll have on your dashboard and one of the most useful, certainly for kind of a, our standpoint and hopefully yours too, the My Inverter tab. This is sort of your bread and butter really in terms of the data that your system is going to collect. It's everything you need is right here and it's really, really useful. We're going to go through all of that um, in this video, breaking it down and all that good stuff. So without further ado, you want to go into your dashboard, um, you want to click on the top right tab and then it's going to bring that into the into the, um, into the the main. Now at the very bottom you'll see a tab, of a graph of kind of what's going on. To be honest, this looks a bit rubbish because it's, um, <laughs> we're not on a very good day wherever Paul lives. So I'll tell you what, let's just... Let's go back and we'll find a different day when it's a bit sunny. We might have to go to the past. If you click on date sort of tab at the very top of that card, you can have a look at the um, have a look at a calendar and we'll just go back in time and pick a day where we've got some nice generation and you can see the whole day in full. How about sometime in May or something? Let's have a look. Yeah, beautiful. Ah, oh, look at that yellow. That's what we want. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, as you can see, you've got this very nice kind of graph right at the bottom that kind of breaks down everything that you've been generating using um, discharging or charging from the battery and then import importing and exporting from the grid too. Um, if you hover over kind of any kind of individual standpoint, you can see each one. So there's grid power, battery power, uh, solar generation and demand power. And then right at the bottom, everything's kind of highlighted. You can toggle them off or on. If you wanted to break down your demand or your solar or your battery or your grid or whatever, um, then you can do so just there. One thing I think that is not the clearest, so I'll try and clarify for you now. If we just get rid of all of these and just have grid power, you can see sometimes it's um, pulling down from the graph and sometimes it's kind of shooting above. That is the signifier that you're either importing or exporting. So if it's pointing downwards, that means that we are taking it from the grid and it will show as a minus. If it's pointing up, that means we are sending it back and it will show as a positive. Um, so as you can see on this lovely May day, Paul's not really exported anything back to the grid to be honest with you, um, but he has taken some overnight, which is fair enough because um, he might have charged up his battery. I think that's, that's probably what's happening here. Um, so yeah, so if you ever see that on your system, don't be too confused, that, that's what that's signifying. Um, again, there's always gonna be small amounts of import and export too. Um, so you can see these kind of like 17, 20 watt little spikes, whatever. Again, that's nothing to be concerned about. All this data here is given to you every five minutes as a standard. Um, if you are connecting locally via the app, that might be a little, uh, that will look a bit quicker for you. Um, but for this, it's just every five minutes. If we go through the top tabs now, so you've got your software. So this will show you if you've got any software updates that need doing. If it does, that'll be a little button that says update in software. Now, Paul's on some very fancy experimental firmware that I don't think I'm allowed to show you, so we're just gonna blur that out, but he's all updated anyway. Notifications, that's very handy. If you notice anything that's wrong with your system or something that might need for us to check over, you'll be alerted. Um, sometimes it's nothing, sometimes it might be a little bit more serious. So if you've noticed some performance drop-offs and you've got some notifications on that tab, it's probably worth just reaching out to us and we can have a check for you. Then you've got your settings options. These are really, really helpful. So as it suggests, it goes through every single one of your settings and you know that, that will determine what your system does. So we've got eco, time charge, time discharge, time export, battery options, and then right at the bottom, reset to default. So if we go through each one, it's very simple. If you wanted to do a charge or a discharge, you just enable it, set the time, and then set the percentage you either want to charge or discharge your system to. The same goes for exports. Um, battery options are a little bit more interesting. So you can set a reserve for your system then. So if you don't want it to drop below a certain level, say if you've got like a backup functionality, and you always want to have a little bit of juice in your tank, you can set that 
that too and you can also determine the charge and discharge power as well if you wanted to um, change that we went through that on the app guide that we did anyway um, one thing that's really really kind of important I think to note as well the reset to defaults the amount of times that we have people um, kind of accidentally breaking that system for meddling and it would be because they've put a reserve on that they've not realized that they've changed something that's not really kind of clocked if ever and this probably is one for the installers to be honest if ever you have a customer calling up where the system's not working properly it's not discharging or charging like they'd expect it to just click that first nine times out of ten that will resolve the issue and if it doesn't then obviously you can elevate it to us but that's a good little first step that you could do next up along we've got system data this is essentially showing everything that's on your graph below but kind of in more of a um linear format we'll go with linear format i don't know if that is correct but it sounds nice it's basically where you're breaking down kind of exactly what's happening at different timestamps too um it's really really handy in terms of diagnosing if you saw something that was a bit off and you can kind of pinpoint the exact time Next up, we've got PV data. This relates to your solar generation in this instance. Now, because Paul's got an AC coupled, you can only, we've only got one string on it. Um, whereas if you had a hybrid or if you had an AC coupled with different uh, solar arrays, then you can kind of break it down individually. Um, like I said, that's really handy, especially on the hybrid inverters. You can kind of break down exactly what each string is giving you. Um, if you've got different kind of, you know, alignments in terms of which way they're facing the sun, you can probably see when one's picking up um, in the morning and when one's picking up towards the end of the day. Uh, battery data, again, as the name suggests, talks about your battery, so you can have a look at your voltages and your temperature and how much it's outputting to. Again, breaks down the graph, but you can also got this very handy like state of charge line type thing, so you can see it going up and going down throughout the course of the day, which is obviously what we want for the battery. We want it charging and discharging. That's the dream. <laughs> um, that's quite handy again if you ever notice any kind of drop-offs or anything like that anything that's a bit kooky to report to us we can then have a look kooky is a good word sounds a bit more stoky than i like but it's cool next up uh we've got the grid data tab so um again just like everything else this kind of relays how much you're either sending back or kind of giving sending back or giving sending to or taking from the grid um you can see kind of grid voltages and uh, frequency and all that kind of stuff as well. This is really handy typically if you kind of ever get a grid voltage warning. If the if the voltage goes above uh, 253 volts, then you'll automatically get a notification from us saying, hang on, that's a bit high, something's a bit up here. And you might need to get in touch with a local DNO, a local authority, something like that, um, just to check out everything. Again, that's only if it's not working. If it's working fine, don't worry about it too much. Uh, then we've got inverter data. Again, that kind of goes through all the information that's going through the inverter, quite self-explanatory. And then meter data, so this breaks down the data that your system is getting from the meter connected to it, in this case, so the EM115. And again, you can kind of see the totals for what your system has done rather than just the daily stuff as well. We've got two different options in terms of what you can see as well. So if you click on the little squared tile thing, you can kind of get a breakdown of everything. This is how it used to look back in the day. That when I first joined, might I add, this is what we were working with. If you wanted to view it like that, you can do. I personally much prefer this, but it's all up to you, whatever you want to do. Then we've got remote control, so this is quite handy. It's kind of everything, again, that you've got in the other options, but maybe a little bit more easier to navigate. It's all kind of just on one page. And as well, you can have a look at your history so you can see what, who's been touching what. If for any reason we've done something or your engineer's done something, you can have a look and you can see the logs. Mainly, this is used by Akim Energy staff just to see if any settings have been changed or whatever. But you can have a look too if you want to see what Florin's done. Have a look and see what Florin's done. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's that's that um, card in a nutshell, really. Sorry, Florin. I don't know why I outed you there. I don't know. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. If you could like and subscribe, I would be delighted. Um, but if you don't want to, it's absolutely fine. Um, I hope this has been enlightening and maybe kind of cleared up a few questions that you might have had when you first bought your system thank you very much for watching we will see you next time have a beautiful day cheers